the board. Uh, very, very similar, but you know what? As I said, we do not want to come across that Zora arc, the slash and dash. Yeah, especially again with Schwa, uh, a very well-known uh, speedster player, picking Zora as a comfort pick earlier in the I think actually it was only like two sets ago on broadcast uh, and doing extremely well. That's right, that was their match against um, LG where it was going head to head with Overlord. I mean, just think about that when Overlord had a comp phase. So you want to get rid of that. Labyrinth's first pick, as we expect from the other side. We also are beginning to expect the Inteleon and the Umbra. Look, two incredible characters as we have seen, but this does leave open for Omo to pick up Hoopa and Leafeon as well. Oh, the Leafeon, so that might be the uh, the option. We've seen that before, when the Zora gets banned, you go to the Leafeon, that's a weird thing to say. Usually it's the other way around. We've seen Leafeon banned, I think, a little bit more, but we do get so much secure coming out of that Leafeon. It's really gonna add a lot to that already strong team. And the Blastoise, which we've seen, I feel like almost every game over the past several sets is coming back in. Uh, that Unite can be such a big deal if you don't use it right underneath everybody as they get popped up. And once again, we have Shua on the Glaceon and Minva picking up that oh, yeah. Revenant. So obviously having those four defenders on the map. Yeah, I like this. I like this like flex where they, they switch their roles and uh, that Glaceon again, it works so extremely well. But uh, S4L, we've seen play the Delphox before. It uh, It's a strange pick, I feel, here. There is going to be some healing, but that's not the healing that you can really prevent. Uh, that's usually, I feel, where you see the Delphox come into play when there's like a comb vein, you want to prevent either that or maybe so, like a, a Clefable. But the Hoopa, totally different thing. They just want to use it kind of as this backup support for, I believe, Epe, who's going to be their kind of main range damage dealer. We've seen in other sets, it looks like it's going to be this again. But it's all going to come down to that Frank front line there, right? They have mm -hmm. to protect that Inteleon and that Delphox that are going to be doing that back line of burst damage. But I think we need to throw it off to our casters to cast this next game. Omer Abyssinian versus Actual. Here we go. Actual in trouble right now. Omo Abyssinian having a miracle play at the end of game number one. But that was an incredibly close series. I mean, amazing stuff from Actual, able to take them all the way to the end there. They almost took Rayquaza away from them. So now the question is, can Actual repeat that performance at the end of game one, except actually finish it out? Or is Omo going to be able to move forward here? Well, I'll tell you what, Omo actually wants to execute their strategy and not leave it up to uh, Drabson absolute prayer play on the Eldegoss uh, and Blastoise, by the way. They both use their Unite moves simultaneously to try and eat that Rayquaza out, and obviously it worked. I am surprised again by this Delphox, to be honest with you, Spragles. I mean, I thought uh, S4L's Zacian was going absolutely banana lands. Um, could have been a decent option. Maybe they're concerned about the range they had, but you still have the Inteleon as well. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, they've got an extremely tanky setup right here. So obviously they're going to have the Inteleon, they're going to have the Delphox to play from, you know, behind that massive curtain of defense. And hopefully that is enough. We've seen some amazing Delphox plays this turn. Tournament, and we've also seen Delphox sort of fizzle out, you know? The question is, is it going to be a firework or is it going to kind of explode on the launch pad there? <laughs> it's going to be a real firework. We talk about snakes and sparklers out here. I mean, this Delphox needs to leverage because its only true prime target is going to be the Trevenant. I mean, Hoopa portals don't really care about fanciful fireworks, which, as we know, shuts down the healing factor of a lot of these classic support Pokemon. So we'll see how that works. Drabson being a real mean bully out here playing on the side of the map. Finally, S4L is about to get uh, gets credit for that KO but a lot of time burned off the clock. Yeah, and take a look at this here. Akjo looking pretty good here in this bottom path, leaving that Bunnelby behind them on one as the Solar Blade able to secure a ton of that right there. The Acrobatics moving on in, picking up some more critical counters there for Inteleon, but unfortunately not able to really pick up much elsewise as we need some experience over here on the side of this Blastoise. They're... they're like you said, looking good, and they're trying to keep some level parity here, but the fact that that Drizzile is already level six is critical. Get the Inteleon online, let it play behind your tankier Pokemon, the Blissey, the Umbreon, the Blastoise, and then go to work. And you can see Trevenant just being pushed all the way back. There's still a little Phantom, unfortunately. Not able to do too much into this Inteleon. Nice big water gun looking for the secure right there. Hoopa trying to pick this up and just putting so much pressure on the central area of Akjil. There can't be anybody playing with more motivation right now than Drabson. I mean, after that clutch play in game one, you know they're feeling themselves here in game two, and they're playing like it. 
And we still have a Squirtle here in this bottom path. They just need to pick up just a little bit. There you go. Get them the War Turtle. We have the Inteleon at the same time. Obviously, they're running that EXP search. They knew they'd be a little behind on experience. But, you know, War Turtle is a tough Pokemon. You need to get that evolution at some point. EXP sure just makes that a little bit harder for Octil. But we've got the early Inteleon. Without a doubt. Now, finally, uh, Luis looking for an opportunity to jump on the team. Uh, playing very far forward is Tempest. They catch quite a few. That's a big time Whoa. KO. And all the damage is going in. Chobo gets shredded by the next Solar Blade that comes through. And all of a sudden, uh, they find themselves by themselves as they are. Dabine is just getting tons of damage shelled in. And this is a great early goal zone siege. And if they can get, they got it to three. That's pretty decent. But most importantly, they're all over the basement ridge. Yeah, this was beautiful for Abyssinian right there. And you you saw that wood hammer. They moved below the tall grass right there onto the other side of the ruin so that they were able to pull them out from that bush. Incredible play. I mean, really amazing Trevenant play from the side of Abyssinia as we head up to the top path right here. And that is secured there by Akjo. Well, we've got uh, James Pond on the liquidation. Quick KO. Not a bad look on Chobo on the other side. Sent packing is the War Turtle. Here's my question, though. What are they going to do with this goal zone now that they have the opportunity? Tempest needs to front line. They're going to try and get this 35 in. They're doing pretty good. They eat the shot from S4L, and that goal zone is gone with a nice overcap. Man, Tempest is just playing an amazing game here on Trelva's Brestry. Incredible stuff right in the face of Akchil the entire time, positioning them exactly where they need to be. Great scores here from Obo Amasidian as they are starting off this game really strong. Yeah, who was in the lead in the uh, level race here for Akjil? The Intalion is actually behind and just kicking over to level nine behind the Umbreon and Delphox. So uh, where I'm looking at the other side, I'm seeing this level 10 Glaceon and it can start being a menace. And now we see this Leafeon waiting up here in this top path, trying to secure some of that with the Solar uh, Blade, but unfortunately missing a lot of it right here. Hoopa coming on in, not able to get knocked out there by the Egg Bomb. It actually came back through a Phantom Force, if you notice that, not through the portal. Mo, well, fanciful fireworks out. Nobody looking at them like that video you took back in the day on your cell phone. Please We're trying look to put at my some fireworks wood videos. They're so beautiful. Things people say all the time, guaranteed. Peeling back, though, and able to sustain is Elvis Press Tree. No questions asked. Tempest, you said, is kind of on one this game. Yeah, Tempest looking incredible this game. I mean, the Trevenant plays are just unbelievable right here. See Leafeon trying to sneak something, but obviously Umbreon is still up here. There's the Snarl. Could jump in with the foul play, and they do. Able to secure the wild Pokemon experience as well. Kind of playing this Umbreon more like an all-rounder and brawler up in that top path with this huge stun and this huge displacement move. Foul play, able to jump in and then push the enemies around. And then the stun on Snarl is still massive. Yeah, Luis with no fear running straight at S4L, having no problems drawing out Mule. And now they have a decent engagement, get a half HP down, force them to eat an egg. Decent support here by Dabin. Oh, that wood hammer goes wide. They can't actually pull Dabin to the front. And now the liquidation is shelling in damage, cut off by Tempest. So a good back and forth here between these two teams over this Reggie Alecki. And now, oh, nice little Pojo. On Mule forces the Bliss Sisters out and the Unite move by the Umbreon. Elvis Pratchery comes through as well. Blissey gets the KO on the tree immediately. And now Mule's looking to put the pressure on. They decide to stop to score to get the time they need to close that goal zone. Akjil, nice little push. Really nice from Akjil as they're going to be able to secure this Reggie Alecki. Obviously, Abyssinian has had Hoopa in this bottom path waiting to bring the team down with their Unite move. But unfortunately, the fight here at the top did not go well. Come on, this tree. Tempest coming through. KO Shrika 2, though, on the back of Miva. But that is all the work they wanted. That thing hits, and they close it with a plus 37. And all of a sudden, Omo Abyssinian finds themselves way out front. Incredible stuff. MVP, MB Tree this game. Trevenant looking amazing on the side of Abyssinian with these hero plays as they secure Reggie Alecki and Reggie Steele right here. Akjil in so much trouble here in game two. With Without a doubt. And uh, 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 Jeremy, or Sir Drabson, just looking great on this Hoopa. They, like I said, they're feeling themselves. They're playing forward. They're not afraid to engage because they know exactly what the limit of this Pokemon is. And they're doing a great job pushing it. Enough time for who else but Tempest to come in and start laying in some damage. Nice hyperspace hole. The Hoopa blinks out, takes their Phantom Force back. And that's a cool little dipsker do there and a good way to get back in the mix without just telegraphing back through the portal. 
Dip screw obviously a technical term that was used perfectly there by Doob Snacks as we see what's happening here in the top path. Akshil just getting some experience there for their Delphox and Teleon waiting in that top path, seeing if there's anyone that they can catch right now. If you look around the map, there's almost no experience for anyone to grab as now finally Akshil can head back up to this top free experience that they have for themselves there. I'll tell you what, I believe it's Epe on the Inteleon hasn't really been a factor this game hasn't shown up to a lot of these fights but they are level 13 so they're keeping pace with the Omo Abyssinian top players as well so that's going to be important the moment they step in they have to have an impact and now we see we have 15 seconds here until Rayquaza at any moment the Rayquaza fight could start we have Umbreon and Lapras kind of going at it in this uh, upper area here near this top L bush but unfortunately no fight for either team right now using the hyperspace highway to head back home and get full health on this Lapras. Omo Abyssinian up right now. They could take the very aggressive play mm -hmm. and look to take Rayquaza off the map, but obviously that's something Akchil did last time and it did not work out for them. So the question is, who is going to start this fight? Is the Mystical Fires keep hitting three in a row for this Delphox, but they are going to just send the tree back through that hyperspace hole as they are crowding around this bottom section right here, pushing towards the enemies. You can see Abyssinian right now getting very aggressive in their positioning all the way towards Akchil's side right here. Lapras heading up to the top path, possibly looking for a little score here, but getting pushed back by this Umbreon. One minute, 20 seconds. Someone needs to start this fight. Delphox getting caught with some damage right here, but peeling back, and no one wants to make this decision. So much is on the line, Doob Snacks. The tournament life of Akchil hangs in the balance of this fight. Two big wood hammers come out, but no, they still peel back. Akchil needs to do something now. There's a minute left in this game, and finally, are they going to make a move? Move. Shua just chipping to this Rayquaza, putting the pressure on Akjil to make a move, and they decide it's time. They're just shelling in damage, and Shua needs to make a move on the players. Blissey takes a chunk of that icy win. Rayquaza resets. Finally, the rings are unbound. The Bliss assistance on to Chobo. They're trying to push here. Woodhammers are out. Hydro Typhoon catches. Nice little stun. First player down for Akjil. Homo Abyssinian looking to close this thing on. Next player down, and that's the Inteleon. They keep pushing around. Let's see if they can find the next target. Blastoise and Blissey rolling on each side of that horseshoe. Surf comes back through. But now it's time running out. Leafeon scores. That's Luis the Hundo Burger. And honestly, this is kind of fizzling out. Was the Del Fox the trick? No, that was a Husker doing a Husker done with no scooter stick. And now Omo Abyssinian getting more points in with 10 seconds left. It's over. Omo Abyssinian will take this game. They will eliminate Akjil and they will move forward in our tournament. Akjil, the last team representing Korea, has been eliminated here on our world championship stage and you can see Omo Abyssinian feeling pretty good about that performance. That was a great game two. Game one a little sweatier than they anticipated of course putting everything on Jarapson and that beautiful Eldegoss cotton cloud crash but here we go. This was a little bit more to their strategy, more properly executed. They isolated the players they wanted and ultimately get a big W. That was Omo Abyssinian's game. Mm -hmm. They just looked amazing that yep. game. They looked like world class. They looked like the kind of team that could head to the grand finals and really do something. They completely shut down Akjil, a team that we've seen be incredibly powerful throughout this entire series. Again, flawlessly winning their group, going three and oh, as they made their way here to day two, but their run is cut short by Omo Abyssinian. Omo Abyssinian looking to continually push through this loser's bracket now. And uh, if they keep playing like that and executing their strategy like that, I think they've got a pretty good chance. I mean, look at this. They're, they're saying goodbye. At least you love the respect that we see, see on stage between these teams, but you know that Akjil is hurting right now. You know Akjil's hurting, especially after that first game where they really had that game almost sewn up there. Two Unite moves thrown by Abyssinian. You know, the big problem is if you don't shut down the entire enemy team, if you don't throw that knock knockout punch at any moment they could come back they could secure Rayquaza they did and then coming back here in game two looking fantastic we can see our score line right here Omo Abyssinian ahead the whole way all the way to the finish where they win this thing without taking Ray.
Yeah, and there really didn't feel like there was a time where uh, Omo Abyssinia was out of control and had to regain the lead or make sure they had to preserve it in some wild way. Abjil just never really able to step up to what Omo Abyssinian was doing. I mean, we mentioned Epe on the Inteleon was a complete non-factor. And when you have a, a top three pick in the format right now, you cannot have that happen. You take a look right here. Interestingly enough, I mean, it was Miva on that Lapras really putting in the work, putting out that damage more than sort of those carry Pokemon, the Glaceon, the Leafeon, obviously more than